Hello, my name is Lee and welcome to today's video tutorial. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be creating a low poly knife. Now the knife is going to be a very simple one. So with that in mind, let's get started. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to bring in our reference images. So what we can do is we can create a simple plane and then we can apply our reference material to it. Now, when we do that, don't forget that we need to also freeze the plane so we cannot move it in the viewport. Now, once we've done that, what we can do is we can use splines in order to draw out the general shape of the blade. Now, here we should, uh, or should I say, what I like to do is I just like to create a very basic spline shape. I don't like to use the curves at this particular point, but then later on, what I will do is I will use the smooth um, uh, option in order to make it nice and smooth and then manipulate um, the tangents independently. That will give me ultimate control. Then from here, what we can do is we can then um, use a extrude modifier in order to get some thickness and then we can start to bevel the edge of the, of the blade. Now, once you have created the extrude, you'll notice that there's uh, a lot of cleaning you have to do. So um, what, what I basically do is I go around the model, I start to remove the excess edges and I start to add extra edges um, in different places in order to make a connect uh, or, or in order to connect the vertexes in order to get a mesh that is um, more suitable for a game ready environment. That is to say, trying to keep the majority of them um, using quads. Now, what I will also do is I'll also insert edge loops in order to support um, the edge of the blade. And this will also make it ultimately better when I have to um, add a turbo smooth and then when it comes to baking out the normals. Now, the next step after that is the creation of the handle for the blade. And so this is pretty simple. All I do is I create a cylinder and then I just start to remove some of the edges in order to get that, uh, I guess, that more chiseled appearance. And um, then I, again, the same thing as I did with a blade, I would start to add um, edge loops and um, a variety of different um, edges and vertexes in, in order to make it better uh, and support the overall shape and to support um, when I when it comes to baking the normal maps and uh, really getting a more refined shape. Now, the next thing that I do after that is to start to make the extra metal things. Um, I, I, I don't really think they're screws, but I guess like some sort of cap or something. Anyway, what I do is I basically just make some cylinders and I delete uh, one half of it and I just uh, um, squeeze it in by um, by changing the scale. And that, that's basically all I do for, for that. It's not really too complicated. Now, what I also do here is I just place it on the outside of the actual, of the actual handle. I'm not going to place it or create it as part of the handle. That is to say, I'm not going to model this as a one thing because um, I know that I'm going to be baking on the normal maps. And so I just want to be using floating geometry when doing this. It's just going to make life much easier. Now, the next thing I do after that is what I basically do is I take the high poly model and I make copies of them. And um, I then start to delete and remove the turbo smooth that I've applied on the high poly models. And I start to um, decrease the amount of uh, geometry within the low poly models. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm just, um, I guess, working backwards in a sense, where I just want to start to deduce the amount of uh, information within the low poly model. And then this really just makes it much easier when it comes to making sure that your normal maps are um, better aligned because the geometry is going to be um, more in line. So that's essentially what I'm doing here. Um, the next thing I'm going to do after that is I'm going to start to take um, the low poly model, okay, and I'm going to start to unwrap it. And once it's unwrapped, um, what I like to do is I like to unwrap them as separate sections. So um then once those sections have been unwrapped i will then combine the mesh the low poly mesh as one and then use the pack uvs in order to pack the uv scale uh, the uvs into um one area okay inside one map then once i've done that what i can do is i can set up the material ids because i know i'm going to be using um substance painter um, so basically what I do is I take the high poly model and then I attach it all together 
Um, and then I select each individual element. And once those elements are selected, I can set a material ID. Once a material ID is set within the materials editor, I can set up a submaterial. And within the submaterial, what I can do is I can set different colors. Now, it is important that when you do this, that you want to set the illumination of each color to 100% because essentially what you want to do is you want to bake out um, a complete map, okay, or, or a color map. Just any type of map that's going to get that color out of Max properly. Now, once you've done that, what you can do is you can export your model from your uh, application, in my particular case, 3D Studio Max, and I'm going to import it into Substance. There, I'm going to simply import the model. Now, I've already created the normal map outside of Substance. That is something you could also do inside of Substance if you wanted to also. But in this particular case, I chose not to. I just think it's a, a little easier and I, I, get a little bit, I get a little bit more control in this particular case. Anyway, so once you've done that, you can import your model into Substance. You can then import the texture resources. Okay, so you can import your um, uh, normal map. Now, you also need to import your um, color map, your mask, and we're going to set that up. Basically, what we can do is we can say that the red is going to be uh, one material and the yellow is going to be another material. Then once we've done that, what we can do inside the materials is we can set up the layers for the individual masks assign the materials and then play around with the materials themselves now basically all i did in this um example is i assigned uh, i think it was like chrome or aluminium to the blade i played around with some of the uh, parameters i set the plastic for the handle and then within the roughness values what i could do is i could just play around and add some grunge or scratches or something like that something just very simple uh, as i said the point of this um, knife is not really to be um, a really hyper realistic um, something you're going to see in the foreground it's basically just going to be um, you know a prop so with that being said that is how I went about creating this simple knife I'd like to thank you for watching this video if you like this format please let me know and until next time bye bye